last lecture we were discussing about introduction about the catalysts and we were just discussing the fundamentals of the catalyst. So, in continuation of that today I will just talk about some more fundamentals of catalyst their applications in industry and type of catalyst. Uh, the basic fundamental of a catalyst what we discussed last time also is some metal some support and the species gas species which absorbs on the surface. So, if you look at here in this the two reactant species A and B they absorb on the surface of the solid which is a catalyst. So, it can be a solid it can be a liquid also. So, here we are talking heterogeneous catalysis. So, throughout I will talk only on the solid surfaces. So, basically a solid surface has a kind of orientation the metals are orientated on oriented on the surface and how these metals are attached to the surface whether they are very strongly binded or weakly binded depending upon that you get a definite catalytic activity or the molecules which collides and strike on the surface will have some time to interact with the surface. Now, it may retain by on the surface or it may be repelled also. So, that depends on the material or electronic configuration of the molecule. So, lot of material science lot of electronic configuration uh, studies are also required when you look at a metal configuration and selection and design of these metal and support. So, here if you look at A and B 2 species they collide on the surface of a solid and then they make some adsorbed species which is a kind of A B right. So, it can be just like A is adsorbing on the surface and B is adsorbing on the surface and then they are transforming into some complex which may be A B right. The same and this is happening because of the collision between the gas molecules. The molecules are colliding. So, there is some kind of collision frequency. So, based on the kinetic theory the number of molecules which are striking on the surface and out of that some molecules are adsorbing and that is what is defined sticking coefficient. So, fraction of the molecules which are colliding and adsorbing on the surface out of that only a certain fraction will be effective for transformation into product. So, this is what the A B a complex which is transforming into a product P which is adsorbed on the surface again. So, P adsorb and then this desorbs from the surface and we separate. So, this is what we saw last time also that when you look at a catalytic reaction it has lot of elementary steps and overall catalytic reaction is non elementary. The potential energy diagram what I discussed is the activation energy last time and thermodynamics where you look at the delta G gives free energy minimization fundamental. So, when the gives free energy 0 the reaction is not possible and you call that the reaction is at equilibrium and which is related to your equilibrium constants equilibrium composition and maximum conversion during a reaction in the presence of catalyst. So, that is why the catalysts are very specific in their action we call it specificity of the catalyst. So, specific activity of the catalyst are there. So, potential energy versus reaction coordinate if you look at. So, the molecules are adsorbing. So, adsorption is generally the exothermic reaction right. So, they will have some kind of energy of surface and exothermic. So, heat will release. So, energy of the molecule is decreasing right and then the kind of energy which is required for the transformation. So, this is just showing a non cat reaction here that is without a catalyst. So, A plus B and the kind of transition complex which forms here and that transforms into a final product P. So, this will be some kind of activation energy required for the reaction in this case if you look at the reactant and the gas molecules that A and B and finally, P. So, whatever the enthalpy of the product minus enthalpy of the reactant you call that heat of reaction or if you define the Gibbs free energy. So, accordingly you can calculate the activation energy for the non catalytic reaction and when the catalyst is available on the surface. So, it is adsorbing. So, some kind of heat of adsorption and then it is transforming into some transition state. So, a different transition state or different product which is intermediate now is forming in the presence of catalyst and then this catalyst this intermediate because it is highly energized molecule and what you call it transition complex unstable type of molecule. So, this will remain in the reaction only for a small period of time 
and finally, it transforms into a product species, it may be on the surface of the solid itself or it may be on the gas phase also. So, it, it the lot of complex mechanisms may be available for depending upon the solid, depending upon the gas and finally, this comes to the surface. So, overall energy if you look at the delta g for the system is not changing whether it is a catalytic reaction or non catalytic reaction. And in most of the cases generally we assume that the heat of adsorption and heat of desorption is almost similar. So, ultimately it becomes whatever the overall heat is nothing but delta g of the product minus whatever delta g of pro product minus reactant we call it in terms of the energy of the reaction. If you look at the design, the catalyst design selection of catalyst and the finally, the for a given reaction it is a very complex system. So, it depends on the concentration the how fast the reaction takes place in a reactor will depend on the concentration of the reactants species. So, higher low concentration or what you say in terms of the partial pressure of the gases species. Then catalyst of course, but we are looking here temperature reaction temperature is very crucial surface area of solid reactants or the catalyst is also equally important in the case of heterogeneous reaction, because the reaction is actually what, what you look at here, these are the molecules which are coming to the surface. So, how much is the surface which is active actually for the reaction or what is the total surface area of the solid that depends and then the molecules are colliding on this surface and they are transforming into the product. So, the surface area of the catalyst is one of the important factor which gives the high amount of metal dispersion onto the surface or sometimes the support itself takes part during the reaction. So, the metal surface area is again a very important during the chemical reaction factor. We have already discussed this last time that uh, the catalysis is a kinetic phenomenon. right? So, it means the sequence of elementary steps which are taking place during the reaction, they are diffusion basically what you say the molecules there is a gas, there is a solid surface. So, on the surface, so details I will talk later, but quickly if I just look at suppose there is a solid. So, a gas is coming to this. So, there will be a transport limitation because the gas this is the film of the gas. So, this is a gas film. So, which may have a certain thickness of delta. So, the gases species has to cross this barrier and come to the external surface of the solid. So, this is the catalyst here right and this catalyst will be a porous material. So, on this the diffusion will take place. So, this is known as the mass transfer step basically here and external mass transfer. So, this gas depending upon the resistance offered by the gas film, the transport resistance may be high for the gas side. right? So, this may be one of the resistance which is offered. So, here and then it is diffusing inside the pellet for chemical reaction. So, chemical reaction is inside a pore of a catalyst, because if you look at the surface of a solid, there are a lot of cracks here basically and what we call them pore, if you look at the structure or a microscopic view of a catalyst. So, this is one pore of a catalyst. So, there may be millions of the pore inside a catalyst, where you are depositing your active metal. So, this is our active metal, which will take part during the reaction. So, the gases species are absorbing here something. So, your chemical reaction term if you look at that is basically on this surface, which is a micro pore or macro pore inside a large pore pellet geometry right. And the similar reaction or reaction is happening in all channels which are in millions in the number. So, that is the crucial factor in terms of catalyst design that how do you generate these kind of pore structures or porous structures and allow the metal to deposit on these structures. right? So, this we will discuss in detail later, but right now what I am talking here that this sequence of elementary steps which I am talking here in this it can be a mass transfer step, it can be a chemical reaction step. right? So, this bulk film surface what we are talking is diffusion or external mass transfer step right. And when it reaches to the surface, when the gas species is able to reach this point, then we are talking about the chemical reaction step. And then you are talking chemical reaction step, then we are talking all these steps which is something like adsorption on the surface right. So, this is the adsorption, then you have a chemical reaction and then 
the transformation into the product species which is adsorbed product species and then the product species transform into product. So, it is a series of steps which takes place during the reaction and we have to just uh, eliminate the resistances during the chemical reaction. So, there may be a large number of steps which may take place during the chemical reaction. So, turnover frequency we are defining because I said a large number of metal concentration may be available on the surface of a catalyst, but the effective when I say the rate of reaction is effective only on these active centers. So, these are very crucial that the number of these active centers which are effective for chemical reaction actually. So, that is we define in terms of turnover frequency which we have already defined last time also that the number of product molecules formed per unit area per second right. So, this is a kind of rate of reaction, but only on the active surface because the catalyst surface may be a large surface area just like a football ground right, where you have a large surface area, but the if you are just cultivating a kind of grass on that then that specific points where these are localized they are specific in terms of the production right. So, it is something like a large surface area 220 meter square per gram or even larger say 1000 meter square per gram which is a support surface area and on to this support you are depositing the metal and that is where you are getting the kinetics or rate of reaction. So, turnover frequency is basically number of product molecules formed per active site per second right and this is only when the active site is known. If active site is not known then you can just define in terms of per unit area of the sometime metal surface area like right sometime we define total surface area of that catalyst. So, there can be different definitions for turnover frequency and sometimes we define turnover time also. So, again it is the time necessary to form a product molecule basically in that how much time it takes to convert a reactant species into product species. So, basically this will be a used for the design of a reactor right. So, how much what should be the size of the reactor in order to get a given productivity. So, you can just correlate this with the catalytic activity. And then another definition turnover rate we have already defined last time is nothing but the turnover frequency which multiplied by the total surface area of the catalyst or in other words what we have defined last time that how much or the cycles the catalyst can be used again and again and we define that in terms of the turnover number. So, catalyst life can be or stability of the catalyst can be defined based on this factor turnover number. So, it must be greater than 100 for a good catalyst. Uh, some simple general definitions which are generally used in catalytic reactions the conversion. So, all of you must be knowing before also it is nothing but the fraction of the reactants which is converted into the product. So, the, that is known as fractional conversion and if you define in terms of percentage. So, that is known as percent conversion that is reactant which is converted into a product right and the reaction rate all of you know that also that is number of molecules reacted per unit time per gram of catalyst. So, generally when we talk a heterogeneous catalytic reaction we define it in terms of moles reacted per unit time per gram of the catalyst. So, that that is something when you are looking at specific activity we define it in terms of turnover number or turnover frequency, but otherwise it is generally per gram of catalyst because most of the time you do not know the number of active centers present in the catalyst. So, basically this will be a function of your rate constant, the pressure partial pressure of the reactant species or concentration likewise right. So, the rate is generally a function of temperature concentration right or in terms of partial pressure or temperature. So, the Arrhenius equation which is related to the rate of reaction k is equal to a e to the power minus e upon r t where e is the activation energy of the reaction right. So, that is just indicating that activation energy if it is high for a reaction. So, it means you need a higher temperature for the reaction right. So, and suppose if you have a multiple reaction where the reactant goes to A goes to R P and A goes to suppose I have reaction something like this A goes to R A goes to S and this reaction has say activation energy E 1 this reaction has activation energy E 2 and suppose if I say R is the desired product. So, you can have some idea that if you have higher temperature the higher temperature favors the reaction of higher activation energy. So, it means if your E 1 is greater than E 2 
then use high temperature right so theoretically this this is related to the selectivity of a product that is desired product divided by undesired product and that can be calculated based on simply ratio of the this moles of this produce divided by moles of this produce and that can be related in terms of rate. So, you can very easily calculate this number. So, and generally pre exponential factor A is temperature independent right. So, turnover frequency between point triple zero one and 100 industry 100 is used in the industry and the you can get now set the temperature because the increasing the temperature will increase the rate right that. So, whether reaction endothermic or exothermic it does not matter. So, rate is always increasing with temperature right. So, so you can have that depending upon temperature you can adjust this. So, the activation energy actually as I said here that if you have a reaction something like mass transfer controlled reactions or diffusion controlled reactions the activation energy value is low right. But when your reaction is kinetic control, the activation energy will be higher. Higher means something of the order of say what is mentioned here that 35 to 45 kilo calorie sojourn per mole. So, generally if the activation energy more than 20 kilo calorie per mole, it means the reactions are towards the kinetic control. For diffusion control reactions, the activation energy will be low. So, most of the reactions something like isomerization, cyclization, cracking, dehydrogenation, hydrogenolysis. So, a high temperature is required right in order to activate the reaction. Whereas, for this hydrogenation reaction generally the activation energy is of the lower order. Right? So, that we will discuss later. So, now what we have discussed is that the a surface metal surface or supported on some surface a type of metal and which is interacting with some support and the gas species which is adsorbed adsorbing or what you call a reactant species. So, basically the there are different theories available for kinetics. So, the, the collision theory is again one because this is what I told earlier is that the molecules are colliding based on the kinetic theory of the gas right. And this is nothing but the number of collisions between the molecules and then transforming into product when you have a simple gas phase reaction right a homogeneous type of reaction. So, collision between reactant molecules right are necessary before the reaction can occur. So, that is the first thing that there should be some kind of kinetic energy and transmission energy vibrational energy which is available in a molecule. So, so, depending upon the energy they are just colliding among themselves. So, only those collisions having sufficient energy are effective in bringing about a reaction activation energy. So, all the molecule may not be active right. So, only some molecules which are able to adsorb on the surface and they have the sufficient amount of energy to transform that adsorb species into a product that is or intermediate that only can transfer into a product species. So, that is why this is a very crucial factor that the all molecules which are the concentration when you are increasing in the gas phase does not mean that your rate is high or does not mean your conversion is high because it will depend on the active molecules which are adsorbed on the surface and then they are transferred. So, it will depend on the orientation of that metal and also the electronic configuration or the molecular property of that gas molecule which is reacting. So, colliding molecules must be properly oriented. So, this is very important now when you look at a selection of a metal for a given reaction. So, the now lot of softwares are available you can use the tools or you just study the chemical bonding of these molecules and the support electronic configuration and then you can choose a kind of reaction. So, density functional theory say suppose based on that you can identify if you have these kind of reactant or molecules and if you have this kind of metal then what product you can get right. So, based on which will be related to a thermodynamics. So, thermodynamics will check the possibility and then all these configuration and then wherever the energy reaches to a minimum level right and accordingly you can have the series of the product distribution from a reactant gas molecules. So, selectivity is very important when you look at a catalytic reaction especially for the multiple reaction and where there is a probability of transforming a or getting a different kind of product from one reactant species. So, basically it is defined as a fraction of the starting material that is converted to a desired product. So, basically what fraction of the material is converted. So, sometimes we define the moles of the product formed divided by the moles of the limiting reactant reacted right. 
so which is controlling the rate of the reaction. So, expressed by the ratio of amount of desired product to the reacted quantity of reactant A, right. In addition to the desired reaction, parallel and sequential reaction can also occur. So, mainly for the multiple reaction when you are doing, then the selectivity becomes a very important parameter. So, there may be a different definitions for defining the selectivity, but general definition is that moles of the product formed divide by moles of the limiting component reactant. But other as I said in the multiple reaction you can have the moles of desired product divided by moles of undesired product also. So, there you try to maximize the product compared to the undesired. So, especially when you look at the atom efficiency. So, this is what the definition of selectivity that is n p is the number of moles of the desired product, nu p is its stoichiometric coefficient right divide by n a 0 is the moles in which is at t is equal to 0 initial number of moles of reactant a right and n a is the final moles of a which is left after reaction. So, basically n a 0 minus n a is the number of moles of a reacted right. So, this is the reactant moles. moles reacted and divide by, but we are writing here because we are defining it in terms of their stoichiometric coefficient right, because your n number of a moles of a can give you m number of moles of b r or product right. So, we are just talking per mole of a if reacted then how many moles. So, we just divide by their stoichiometric coefficient. So, that so in one way the definition of selectivity is nothing but moles of the component I formed or product I formed divide by its stoichiometric coefficient divide by moles of the reactant reacted divide by its stoichiometric coefficient right. So, that can be a very general definition. So, most of the when you write the multiple reaction or reforming reaction. So, we define it in terms of this just for the comparison of the product right because per mole of the reactant how many reacted. So, you can very easily calculate from this. So, this is mole or mole percent either basis it can be given. So, this is what the stoichiometric coefficient can be negative or positive. So, we always take it a mod of that stoichiometric coefficient right. So, this is what the reaction shown. So, A goes to P and which is a desired product here and then it can go P 1 and P 2 undesired and it can be like this also a series reaction right. So, selectivity can be defined here in terms of desired product divided by undesired product also. It can be defined desired product divided by total moles of the product form also right. But in most of the cases the selectivity definition which is generally for use for research purpose also is that right. So, when you look at a catalyst then we will talk in terms of the activity right that is towards how fast is the rate of reaction that is one thing then selectivity that is how much is the desired product you are getting. But again the more important factor is stability right deactivation property of that catalyst because we do not want the catalyst for a shorter period. So, we want that the activity should be prolonged for a larger time without decreasing the product concentration or product productivity of the for the given reaction. So, the stability of the catalyst is again important for checking or shortlisting the catalyst. So, the chemical thermal and mechanical stability all it can be the poisoning because of poison precursor because of high temperature right prolonged high temperature uh, uh, and environment and it can be the mechanical stability like in fluid beta catalytic cracking or moving bed reactor where the particles are colliding among themselves right attrition. So, it should have sufficient attrition resistance and enough mechanical strength right because they are striking among themselves and that time they may crumble and when the particles get a smaller in size it may leave the reactor right because you are a fluidized bed reactor conditions. So, uh, this is very important. So, catalyst stability it can be influenced by decomposition by coking by poisoning. So, we will talk on that later and deactivation can be followed by measuring activity or selectivity as a function of time. So, last, last time I was defining the rate at any time t divided by initial rate right. So, generally that is defined in terms of the catalyst activity if I just look at briefly I will talk right now. So, a is a function of time is nothing but r a at any time t divided by r a at t is equal to 0. So, here we are just defining the rate for transformation into a desired product. So, this if this is activity theoretically we want 1 because all the time that the same rate should be achieved, but if does not happen 
because in most of the chemical reaction either because of the dispersion problem that is the molecules are coming together they are reacting. So, dispersion is decreasing right they are colliding. So, the they become larger in size. So, surface area decrease. So, because of these problems your activity graph which is a as a function of time now at here if you take time on a stream. So, it can go like this right it can go like this also. So, this is because of what we are talking the activity of the catalyst is decreasing and it can go like this also when there is severe cooking like we have to look at a fruit catalytic cracking units like the they may have this kind of deactivation problem. So, you have to look at continuous regeneration of the catalyst if possible right otherwise discard the catalyst and look at for a new fresh catalyst. So, this this is another challenge when you select a novel catalyst for a system. So, if you look at presently the current scene the efficient use of raw material and energy is of major importance. So, this is what the application of catalyst in the current scenario. So, that is the new energy sources we need we need alternative energy alternatives we need existing technology where the conversion may be a problem catalyst deactivation may be a problem the productivity may be a problem the desired product what you want it may have a lot of undesired product also and that is the concept of green catalysis nowadays. So, that is what we are looking that the optimize the existing process and rather than develop a new one. So, there are still lot of challenges as I uh, say again and again that fissure drop process it is a 80 year old process right where the syngas and hydrogen is converted and you get methanol you can get gasoline you can get diesel right it is series of or alcohol. So, series of hydrocarbons can be obtained from this fissure trough process and developed during uh, 80 years before by Shashal technology right in South Africa they have a plant on that. But uh, uh, the new trend what says that you need a narrower down product distribution right you are looking for some different kind of coals right and you are gasifying coal converting into syngas and then utilizing. So, your trends are something that the traditional catalyst which may be iron based or cobalt based they may not be sufficient for this kind of reaction right. You need to change the activity you need to look at the textual property of the catalyst mass transfer limitation diffusion pore structure and stability of the catalyst. So, this is the meaning here that it is preferable to optimize the existing processes and then develop the new one. So, there are still lot of challenges where the technology which have already been developed and they need the revamp right they need to be upgraded. So, we need to look at new catalyst new process for this kind of process. So, that is still a challenge. So, for various regions the target quantities should be given of the following order of priority. So, so, first preference we give to selectivity that is the desired product then we look at in terms of stability and finally, in terms of activity all these terms are equally important in one way, but when you look at the comparison then we just see that the it should be selective in action then it should be stable also simultaneously and activity for the reaction should be high right. So, this these are that is the property of a catalyst should be compared in all way, but when you look at you have to look at your balance or optimize this process and then select the best catalyst for the process. Uh, before going for details again just I want to say the same thing, but uh, here earlier also I discussed that the reactants they come on to the surface. So, this is a kind how does a catalyst look on a surface. So, this is a support right the support objective is to provide you a high surface area or something like a base right on which the metals can be placed or adsorbed or maybe just a placed on that in terms of physically, but generally we look at a kind of metal support interaction. So, basically it is a platform for the metal right. So, active phase is this one this is your metal part here and these metals may clap like this. So, there may be different metal. So, when this sintering takes place so this is the problem this is the high temperature reaction here. So, these two particles may agglomerate and you can get a bigger particle. So, why sintering happens it is because of the time course temperature. So, initially the metals are well dispersed like this right. So, these these are nothing but in terms of crystal size if you look at if you look at their uh, structure. So, they are well dispersed, but what happens due to the time course when the catalyst has been used continuously. So, these two may club together and make like this a bigger particle. So, they are joining here like this right and this is nothing but because of solid solid reaction right metals they are interacting 
and they may give you and this is the problem when you have a nano particle because they are unstable and getting these stable particles for a long period of time is a challenge here right. So, this is what called sintering of this which is because of temperature and time. So, high temperature reaction and for continuously long period of time. So, you may have the growth of the crystal. So, crystal size is increasing and because of the increase in crystal size surface area reduces. So, activity will reduce. So, that is a another challenge or problem in the case of cartilage surface. So, the actually if you look at here the metal support interaction another important property here that we will discuss again in details later that the reaction across the interfaces here. So, uh, the Sabatier principle says that the metal and support should be interacted, but if the binding is too strong then metal will have the more chemisorption activity towards the support rather than the gas molecule right. And if the binding is too weak, so what will happen the metal will leave the surface right. So, we need to tune this thing. So, neither the metal has a very strong interaction with the support nor it should have a very weak. So, this is the in one way that if you look at I want a dispersion like this right just attached to the surface like this. So, what is the advantage here every surface is exposed for chemical reaction here the molecule can come and strike on the metal throughout right. So, but the problem is that in this case it is a weaker kind of adsorption. So, what will happen the metal itself because of high temperature when you heat it the metal itself may leave the surface. So, this is known as a weak metal support interaction and the second scene may be like this you have a metal which is binded to the support like this. So, more oriented towards the support side and less is exposed to the gas molecule which is coming to that. So, this is a strong metal support interaction here right. So, this is also not good because you have wasted part of the surface area of the metal. So, this is again a part of design or catalyst selection or catalyst design. So, you need to look at that we should have. So, this is a shown here the metal support interaction where it is strongly binded and we need to tune these metal support interaction while designing a catalyst. And if you look at solid state reactivity, so preparation and support of active phase. So, this you have to design during your catalyst preparation. So, what temperature you are doing the heat treatment or aging then how does your catalyst is prepared from which solution, what was the pH right, what was the heating rate, what was the agitation speed and then finally, you are doing calcination and reducing it. So, so many factors are involved when you look at a this complete geometry or a complete catalyst preparation. So, we need to look at a science here, we need to look at the art here and simultaneously we have to look at the electronic configuration of the metal and support. So, it involves the chemical engineering, chemistry, physical science, nano science, nano catalysis and electronic theory also right. So, so many things are associated when you look at a better catalyst design or select a good metal and support for the reaction. So, large number of catalysts are being practiced in the process industry right. So, different process industry. So, I told that it is a billion dollar business and uh, uh, different process industry use different kind of catalyst. So, which may be patented or licensed right. So, if you look at hydrogen industry the generally they for coal, ammonia, methanol, fissure troughs, hydrogenation, hydro treatment, fuel cell. So, lot of catalysts are being used here natural gas processing again steam reforming autothermal reforming, water gas saved, partial oxidation. So, these all process need catalyst for the reaction, petroleum refining, FCC fluid catalytic cracking, hydro treating, hydro cracking, reforming, alkylation they need a catalyst, petrochemicals, monomers, bulk chemicals, pharmaceutical industry right, fine chemicals, agrochemical, fragrance, textile, coating, surfactant. So, wherever you see the process you find a catalyst for the process right, because you need to develop a selective product right. So, you need to have the high efficiency high productivity. So, you need something which is a foreign element, but it increased the activity for that reaction. So, same thing nowadays environmental catalysts you must have seen your automotive exhaust catalyst monolith converters right. So, they are again 
the or socks nox right volatile organic carbon so three way type of catalysts are used nowadays in your automotive vehicles right for the treatment of these type of pollutants so we'll talk on that later so why r and d catalysis is important because lot of r and d is being done in terms of the catalyst design catalyst development new process development novel process development new technology so for all these you need a catalyst right the reason is that the 90% of the chemical industry involved products made using the catalyst so whether you look at food industry you look at a fuel industry polymer textile pharmaceutical agrochemical in every area the catalyst plays a major role right so even the biocatalysis nowadays right enzymes which are nothing but proteins right so a different kind of catalyst system but again is you being or again are being used for the process industry and need to be developed for the a novel process for their technology also so for discovery use of alternate resources of energy fuels raw materials for chemical industry again you need a catalyst right so lot of r and d is being done in these areas right and new technology have come up also and more yet to come same thing for pollution control global warming nowadays carbon sequestration carbon taxing you know right so co2 sequestration is to be done for the removal of carbon dioxide from the environment or minimize the elimination of carbon dioxide from the environment right or just control it from the source itself so in all cases you need a catalyst so catalyst is basically is a multidisciplinary if you look at here that whatever we have read so far that it re requires physical science it requires chemical science right then nano catalysis material science so basically all these fundamental things are involved when you look at the phenomenon of catalysis right or development of a new catalyst development catalytic process you should learn all these things right so the catalyst basically inorganic solid so it can be other also polymer based catalysts are also being used nowadays ligand based right organometallic complexes so different kind of catalysts are generally being used so basic uh, mainly it is inorganic solid say alumina silica right all these kind of materials as a support and then metals right the catalyst is a surface phenomena i have already said this solid state and surface structures play important role so this is what the crucial in terms of the preparation of the catalyst right so what is their structure how these molecules or metals are oriented right where they are face centered body centered cubic centered so accordingly their orientation of the molecules right which you which you identify from x ray diffraction patterns that how these metals are oriented or what is the configuration so the depending upon these orientation fcc what say 1 0 0 0 1 1 something like that there can be different orientation to or in x y z plane if you look at right so depending upon that the gas molecule comes and strikes on that and adsorbs there so rate of adsorption strongly depends on these and that is what you call electronic theory of that right so the catalyst involves that electronic theory and so during preparation you get these kind of structures and adsorption desorption and surface reactions are again subject to the thermodynamics transport and kinetic control so there you need a chemical engineering right so this is involving your physics this involves your chemistry and then finally a chemical engineering and but you select a metal you look at their spd structures right because d orbitals they have unpaired d orbitals all these metals so they are more active as a catalyst right so to have a kind of activity you need a kind of exchange of the electrons right so they how fast they can do that that is exchange the electron that will give you a different kind of catalytic property right so this is very crucial in terms of catalyst design or selection so adsorbate substrate again or adsorbate adsorbate interaction adsorbate means the gas species right which comes and adsorb on the surface right so and this solid is an adsorbent so adsorbate adsorbent interaction so substrate i can call as an adsorbent this one right so this is a, so adsorbate adsorbent substrate where which is your catalyst basically here right or adsorbate adsorbate among them also the molecules are colliding right to gas a gas b so they are colliding in the gas phase right or the single molecule they 
the hydrogen say it is colliding among itself right. The, so, there is a collision between different kind of molecules or same kind of molecules that is similar to what you are right in carnetic theory of the gases right. So, depending upon that so the molecules may dissociate they may associate right and then they adsorb on the surface also. So, that depends on your temperature conditions your reactant conditions right. So, based on that or collision theory. So, there may be a different kind of interactions and that is associated. So, are both electrostatic and chemical. So, this is a part of physical chemistry right. So, kinetic theory of the gas and then chemical reaction basically organic chemistry, but there can be the other kind of uh, theories also involved in that right. We are talking nowadays green chemistry and catalysis right. So, what, what the uh, what is the new thing a green catalysis the concept is same right. The only thing that as I said that R and D is being done in order to develop new product, R and D is being done in order to utilize the catalyst properly or efficiently right. CO 2 should be removed from the environment or should be minimized in the environment right. And similarly for other gases methane all these global warming gases or greenhouse gases right, which may cause that they disturb the ecological system right. So, the technology is called green if it use raw materials efficiently right that is the first basic thing that all the materials or all the raw material which are being used in the process should be utilized properly right. So, zero waste basically discharge or dis zero waste discharge right. So, efficiently such that it use the use of toxic and hazardous reactants and solvents can be avoided while formation of waste or undesirable by product is minimized. So, this is the new concept of green catalysis and Sheldon has just defined this a scientist uh, who has just talked on the concept of green catalysis and they just uh, the group research group wide research group uh, the research is being done nowadays in order to develop new technology new process and that which use the reactants and converts everything into a product or a byproduct which can be used for some other process right rather than wasting. So, this is known as a green catalysis. So, what you look at here the structure right. So, this uh, the green catalysis concept is that we need to develop a safe technology right. So, it should not harm the society right that is one thing and catalyst has the role here. So, a safe technology environmentally acceptable right free from pollutants yield everything what you are looking that should be in terms of desired product right or the byproduct even if it is being generated that should be reused in the process or should be used by some other process right. Efficiency every atom is counted now earlier we were talking the overall efficiency, but now we are talking atom efficiency right that is how many moles of the product or instead of talking that we are saying atoms produced divided by other total what are the other atoms or byproducts formed right. So, atom to atom we are looking now. Right. So, atom efficiency I will just define this term again simple separation separation is easy that is the problem with the homogeneous catalysis right. When you have a same phase system then the separation of this catalyst and the product is a problem right. So, that is why the, although the homogeneous catalyst is better it has high conversion right, but the problem is separation and purification. So, simple separation is required no waste. So, this is the zero waste dis discharge right. So, then the steps number of steps should be limited right in a shorter step you should get. So, what will be the advantage your size of the system will reduce right because if you look at just uh, if you are something a coal can be converted to liquid fuel in single step rather converting to a syn gas and then you are converting using the fissure top. Is there any technology by which coal can directly be converted to liquid right. So, your number of steps are reduced right and then you have to look at the exergy analysis or energy whether the process should not be energy intensive I mean at the same time right. Same thing for biomass conversion to liquid fuel. So, you need to look at the technology you need to look at the process which is environmentally friendly zero waste discharge right and all kind of renewable materials that can be used in the process right. So, because the energy sources are limited right. So, we are looking alternative sources of energy. So, if you have these kind of technology where these renewable biomass or all these kind of waste materials and they can be converted into energy that is again a good thing. So, the this is the concept of green catalysis that you develop a process and the catalyst in such a way that it should fulfill all these requirements right. So, 
that is what I was talking in terms of the green catalysis concept the important thing is now atom efficiency right. So, atom efficiency is basically nothing but the molecular weight of the desired product divided by the total molecular weight of all the product right. So, if you are saying that your A goes to P plus Q in a single reaction event right. So, we are counting the molecular weight of P divided by the total weight of P plus Q right. So, especially when you look at the pharmaceutical industry or specialty chemical this number is very very small because you look a small suppose if you have a extraction process a simple extraction process you are taking a seed cloud say right and from that you are extracting its oil. So, oil percentage very very low just 8 percent or 10 percent oil in a seed right cloud seal and seed oil when you are taking. So, the percentage wise when you are developing the process the maximum yield say 8 percent. So, what will do what will you do with the residue right. So, try to convert into some other useful process right or other useful product convert it into energy because residue can be converted right. So, these are just concept in terms of the new technology or new process which is nothing but a green technology or green process. So, you need to develop a technology in such a way that molecular weight of the desired product should be that is divided by the total molecular weight of all the products should be high atom efficiency that is everything is converted towards the desired product right that is the idea. So, concept of atom efficiency the by an E factor another important term is that how much waste is being produced from that right. So, if you are just discharging that the by, by product not utilizing that properly right. So, atom efficiency generally as I defined molecular weight of the desired product divided by the total weight of all the product. So, the second one which is your important environmentally acceptable factor is E factor. So, this is this world is nowadays used more and more commonly the weight of the waste or undesired product divided by the weight of the desired product. So, how much if I am saying that A goes to P plus Q. So, I am defining a P is the desired product Q is the undesired product. So, I am talking Q by P how much is that. So, that is what I said that in pharmaceutical industry the waste product is very high because they need only they are getting a small concentration of the desired product right purity is 99.99 percent in terms of that chemical specialty chemical and rest is discharged. So, the E factor if you look at for this kind of industry it will be large number right. So, this should be a small number basically right. So, E factor is basically the weight of the waste or undesired product divided by the weight of the desired product right. So, this should be controlled in one way because you cannot make it minimum, but you try to make it minimum right. You have to make it you cannot make it 0, but you can minimize this number. So, basically this is related to mass balance for any alternative routes right. So, E factor mass index what we are talking that they are related to the amount of waste generated during the process right. So, ratio of the waste to the product that is the output oriented indicator here right. So, whereas mass index is ratio of all raw materials divided by the product to an input oriented factor. So, these can be used intermittently. So, just as an example if you look at here for this green process concepts or green technology concept that any molecule right conventional oxidation of any secondary alcohol this in presence of chromium oxide, sulfuric oxide right and the, so this is your desired product here right. So, if you look at here the other products are chromium sulphate and water. So, atom efficiency the if you calculate here the atom efficiency is nothing but uh, this is just 396 basically this is 396 divided by 860 total of this right total molecular weight this water plus chromium sulphate plus this right. So, just take the division of this. So, this divided by this this comes out roughly 42 percent right. So, basically what I am saying that molecular weight of this total moles mo molecular weight of this that is total mass in terms of this now. So, 3 moles are formed. So, whatever molecular weight into 3 right and this 120 is this just and then this water. So, total mass of the desired product divided by all the product form mass right. So, this is from this you are getting using this 3 molecules of this right secondary alcohol you are getting this as the desired product. So, the basic idea here in this is that this should be maximized rather than these two ok. So, 
Similarly, if you look at other reaction here for the say oxygen, you just oxidize it and get again this product. So, this, this is just a comparison of two process, whether you use this chromium oxide and sulfuric acid and then get this. The second is direct oxidation, partial oxidation and then again you get this. So, if you in this case, if you just calculate this atom efficiency 120 divided by 138, because this is not there, right? the one by product you have minimized. So, 120 divided by 138, it comes roughly 87 percent. So, here the atom efficiency 87 percent. So, this process is more efficient compared to this. See, right now we are just comparing in terms of the process or reaction. We are not talking in terms of feasibility, right. We have not said in terms of temperature, pressure, catalyst, which is used for these two process. So, you have to look at those also, but as you look thermodynamically this, this, this thing, this process is better compared to this, right. And this is the concept of your atom efficiency or green technology. So, we, if you are able to get this process, then you can very easily increase the yield output with less amount of right input processes, but need to check. Same thing just like the methane you convert into syngas or you get hydrogen by reforming process. So, reforming consumes a large amount of energy highly endothermic, right. But if you are able to generate a process just by methane plus oxygen, right, partial oxidation of methane, which is exothermic reaction. So, you are generating energy from that, right. But the only problem is that high where the reactions are highly exothermic, the control becomes a problem, right. So, runaway problems comes, unsteady or transient conditions arise. So, in that case, if you are able to develop a technology or catalyst or process for partial oxidation of methane to hydrogen, it will be a good process, right. Because there, if you calculate your atom efficiency high, right. So, these are the different challenges or challenges for the process. So, this is just the accessibility process, if you look at, I have taken it from the reference Seldon. So, the, the most of the environmental acceptability product, if you look at in different segments of chemical industry. So, E factor which is very important in terms of kg waste divided by kg of product. So, oil refining has E factor less than 0 0.1, right. So, that is the waste generated in this oil industry is relatively less, but if you look at here pharmaceutical industry, the E factor is even 25 more than 25 or 100, so very high, right. Same thing for the fine chemical also, it is between 5 and 50. So, it means these for the there are lot of challenges in developing new processes for this, right, because the every product every product has to be used as a useful product rather that is right. So, that is the challenge especially for the pharmaceutical industry. So, you need to develop the technology, you need to develop the process or catalyst for these processes which where these can be minimized. So, there are still lot of opportunity in reducing this number from 0.1 to 0 0.01 something like that right for the oil refining itself, bulk chemical itself right. So, this is what the concept of grain catalysis. Uh, so, as I said, there is substantial increase in E factors on going downstream from bulk chemicals to fine chemicals and then specialty chemicals. So, E factor is increasing, right? As you just look at your specialty or purity of the product, so your waste generation is more and more, right? So, this is just a typical picture of a green catalysis, which you, I was talking in terms of concept of green catalysis. So, strategic goal. So, goal is sustainable development. So, whatever technology you develop, right, that should be sustainable, right, that is the one of the most important thing, sustainable development, right. So, approaches can be you look at the green chemistry, what I was say, saying, develop the process, right, in terms of atom efficiency, in terms of E factors, and then engineering, apply the engineering, because when you look at the scale up of the process, you need to look at engineering and then industrial importance, so industrial ecology and then renewable energy sources. So, all these practical approaches, these can be done, right, this can be our approach. And then your operational tool can be catalysis, just look at the waste management, process intensification, very important when you look at the commercialization of the process, right. And then monitoring tools like life cycle assessment, E factor, atom economy. So, this is the complete picture of green catalysis, which I said. And drivers for green catalysis is you have to look at the economic benefit that is the first thing when you look at the commercialization of the process, right. So, the 
different aspects when you look at the correlate this green chemistry in terms of low operating cost, low capital investment. So, that will be the economically benefit right. So, to what extent we can move to this point right that is important that will depend on the selection of a suitable process, selection of a suitable catalyst and then finally, technology right through process intensification. So, you need lot of say government legislation that you have to look at the social environmental and government right legislations and then you have to just produce less hazardous material as per the requirement right environmental protection acts high fines for waste. So, you have to just look at the producer responsibility. So, all these things look to be controlled and same thing for the societal responsibility in terms of improved public image right safer and smaller plants pollution curve free right. So, all these things need to be looked into when you look at the green catalysis concept. So, this is just a basic introduction about the catalyst and uh, the green chemistry and catalysis concept. So, uh, when we look at a catalytic reactor design or catalytic process, we need to understand first about the type of catalyst right that is uh, for a given process. So, catalyst can be defined in a different way also depending upon the their applications for the reaction depending upon the phases involved depending upon their uh, itself the chemical composition right. So, it can be solid, it can be liquid, it can be gas also right. So, all the type of catalyst can be used right. So, basically when you say the catalyst for it depending upon its physical state they are gas, liquid and solid right. So, this is very general, but most of the time when we talk heterogeneous catalyst we will talk a solid catalyst. So, classification of the catalyst which is based on substance from which the catalyst is made. So, it can be inorganic solid right. So, gases, metal, metal oxides, inorganic acids, bases. So, different kind of catalyst can be available. So, in the environment also you know that depletion of the ozone layer through UV light right that is again a kind of H the ultraviolet lights and that cause the depletion of the ozone layers right. So, that is a kind of catalytic reaction. Same thing the polyacrylonitriles or the, uh, the other environmental pollutants right they get converted during in the environment itself. So, they are a gas kind of right. So, the presence of some of the gases species may activate the reaction for the other right. So, they can act as a catalyst. So, uh, same thing here the organic catalyst they can be organic acids, enzymes etcetera. They, so, enzymes are again a kind of catalyst which is heterohomogeneous catalyst right because partly it dissolves in, in the dissolved phase and partly in the solid phase because it is nothing but a kind of emulsion proteins right. So, they remain in the emulsion form. So, biocatalysis, so enzymatic catalysis. So, basically this is just they depending upon whether uh, they are in the solid phase, liquid phase and gaseous phase and then depending upon their inorganic type or organic type. So, just very general definition or general classification of catalyst, but the more important if you look at in terms of the catalyst selection or characterization or type of catalyst that is the homogeneous catalysis and heterogeneous catalysis right. So, in broadly if you look at we divide our catalyst system just like in terms of phases they are present right. So, homogeneous catalysis when both catalyst and all the reactant products are in the same phase right. So, that is known as homogeneous catalyst. So, it can be a gas phase, it can be a liquid phase. So, in fact, if you look at your reaction rate because they, they are continued directly in touch right a kind of say micro emulsion or nano particles when you what you say. So, these kind of things can be obtained in the case of homogeneous catalyst. So, organo metallic complexes are nowadays being used right because they can be directly used in the liquid phase. But the problem again as I said is the separation of a catalyst is a problem right. So, that is why less used otherwise they have more activity right. Another category which is widely used in all refinery petrochemicals is that your heterogeneous catalytic system. So, here the reaction system and the catalyst. So, they are in a different phase right. So, it means the your reactant may be gas, catalyst may be solid, reactant may be gas, catalyst may be liquid. It can be in liquid liquid, but two different layers right a kind of just like a aqueous phase and hydrophobic phase right where the organic layer and hydro water layer. So, they are separated by and the reaction is taking place from one phase to another phase right. So, this is also a case of a heterogeneous catalytic reaction. So, reaction system involves basically a multi phase. So, whether it is catalyst, reactants, products. So, broadly if you look at your catalyst can be classified like homogeneous catalyst and heterogeneous catalyst right. 
but in between as I said for the enzyme type catalyst they are known as heterogenized homogeneous catalyst right. That means, they have partly the homogeneous characteristic partly they have the heterogeneous characteristic right. So, they are emulsion type catalyst basically. So, they are known as so they, they go and dissolve in there. So, they are in the liquid they go into the liquid phase. So, they remain in the liquid homogeneous type reaction phase right and the part of that remains in the solid phase. So, they that is a heterogeneous. So, the all these enzymes are basically amino polyamino acids right and uh, so they are categorized in this category heterohomogenized. And same thing for the bio catalyst also they are this is a category of the similar where enzyme is kept on some substrate right. So, again it is a heterogeneous catalytic part or a heterohomogeneous, but since the enzymatic reactions are different then the your heterogeneous catalytic which is in terms of the inorganic or organic catalyst right. So, we keep them in a separate category. So, bio catalysis right which is nowadays a new type of catalytic system and using the bio materials right say enzyme is one and there can be separate different kind of these bio catalysts right and they can be used for the say uh, the old process where you know the starch or the cellulose they can be converted to alcohol right the manufacture of the alcohol is through this enzymatic route right. So, that is a well known process now. And in heterogeneous catalysis again we subdivide one thing in the bulk catalyst. So, bulk catalyst means the entire material acts as a catalyst right that is just like suppose if I am saying platinum only platinum is being added or mixed in a reactants. So, and itself the whole platinum will act as a catalyst right. So, that is known as bulk chemical or sometimes say alumina just alumina is used as a catalyst zeolite is used as a catalyst right. So, itself is acting as a catalyst not the purpose of the support or high surface area. Right. The second one when the precious metal is deposited on the surface right because this metals have low surface area. So, in order to provide them a large surface area support or give, give provide a good kind of dispersion we deposit them on a large surface area or on a substrate which has a large surface area. So, like alumina right. So, sometimes alumina acts as a catalyst itself for dehydration reaction say or zeolite acts as a catalyst itself sometimes they are used as a catalyst and the support also by functional catalyst right. So, that is known as bi functional two functions right metal function and the support function. So, that, that can partly part of this metal can have the hydrogenation activity whereas, the support may have a cracking activity right acidic sites. So, that we will discuss later, but the bulk catalyst means the entire material itself as a, as a catalyst and supported catalyst means where the precious metal or the metal is deposited on some substrate and which is used for providing them the large surface area or catalytic property. Whereas, in the again in the homogeneous side, so homogeneous like sulfuric acid alkylation right which is a homogeneous reaction right. So, you know that the sulfide sulfuric acid uh, phosphoric acid. So, they are used as a catalyst for alkylation or polymerization reaction generally used in the petrochemical industry right. So, hydrofluoric acid alkylation HF alkylation is another one right. So, sulfuric acid polymerization right. So, these are acidic strong acid which are generally used for the alkylation reactions right. So, you get alkylated gasoline from that. This similarly for biodiesel manufacture again when you look at trans esterification reaction that is sulfuric acid or potassium hydroxide in liquid form is used as a catalyst right. So, they are categorized as the homogeneous catalyst right and now if you are using acid catalyst so it is acid catalyst like sulfuric acid I said hydrofluoric acid a base is used like QH NOH then it is a base catalyst right and sometimes the same thing is done in the presence of transition metal complex. So, this is nowadays being used in a big way right that is what I said that they are providing you a large surface area right and kind of metal complexes. So, these are organometallic complexes based on ligand based theory right. So, metals are associated with some something like say EDTA and you have replaced the OH group and metal is connected there right. So, so this metal now this organometallic complex will remain in the liquid phase or gel phase and it will act as a catalyst for the system right. So, the only thing that the suppression of these catalysts for from the bulk product after reaction is a difficulty right, but this is coming up in a big way for the 
catalytic reaction because they have the they are acting like a nanoparticle they the what you get the sole gel solution gel or hydrogel it is the gel contains these metal particles inside it right and it is well dispersed right separated each metal particle is separated inside the gel because it can be a polymeric structure right a polymer gel inside that you have metal complex right so ligand based theory which is used here for making so this is known as a transition metal compound and a category of homogeneous catalysis. So, I stop here, uh, I will continue it next time.